Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are St. Louis. Welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. The Redbirds host the Central Division leading Milwaukee Brewers. Rubber game of the series here this afternoon at Bush Stadium. Glad you're with us. Rick Horton with Al Roboski. The Cardinals played very well yesterday to even the series, a 9-7 victory behind one of the new Cardinal starters, Justin Masterson. Another new face today is John Locke coming over from the Red Sox. What can we expect from him? Well, I think we can see a very competitive game. He is a big game pitcher with postseason experience. He's looking for win number 150 in his career. Got a big curveball, and he has a, a difficult fastball to hit because he, at six foot six, he throws in a downward plane, hard to center up the baseball. Beautiful afternoon at Bush Stadium. Lackey and Garza are pitchers. The rubber game coming up on Fox Sports Midwest.
Redbirds hoping to get within one game of their Central Division rivals. St. Louis took game two behind Justin Masterson last night. His first start as a Cardinal. He had plenty of offensive support. Nine runs on 12 Redbird hits. Home runs by Colton Wong and Johnny Peralta, his 15th, both came early in support of Masterson. Another new face in town is former Red Sox John Lackey. He's been a big game pitcher throughout his career. Will he get that same offensive support in his first Cardinal start? Cardinals Brewers coming up next on Fox Sports Midwest. Brought to you by Bud Light Line, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Come in and visit your mid-American Chevy dealers and make your move to Chevrolet today. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Perfect afternoon for baseball at Bush Stadium. Mini Clydesdales are giveaway today. Very popular promotional item. I've got mine, Al has his, and we're getting ready for Cardinal Baseball here this afternoon. Another big crowd on hand today. Sellouts in game one and game two, Cardinals and the Brewers. Cardinals trailing the Brewers by two games, and they are just a half game behind the Pittsburgh Pirates going into play today. And the pregame antics of Adam Wainwright and others. Part of the Cardinals pregame routine. I thought he was done with those. I was going to say, but how do you have a routine for every single player? And we are going to play this game, aren't we? That's how good Wainwright is. Cardinals take the field. John Lackey. First start as a Cardinal. Signs his autograph and then he'll begin his warm up tosses, looking for victory number 12 on the season. Be his first National League win, his 12th win this year, and 150 to win the total he's looking for today. And here's the lineup he'll face Carlos Gomez, always dangerous, atop the order for Milwaukee, followed by Jonathan Lucroy and Ryan Braun in the first. Inning. Ryan Braun in seven games against the Cardinals, 345 average. Aramis Ramirez, a Cardinal killer, hits fourth, followed by Ricky Weeks and Chris Davis. Mark Reynolds gets to start at first base this afternoon. Elian Herrera at short. And Matt Garza, the veteran right-hander, will pitch in bat ninth. 
and our key in numbers for John Lackey. 11 and 7 on the season. As I said, looking for win number 150. He has a big breaking ball, but a very good fastball that he stands at six foot six, and they say that he throws it on a downward plane. Very difficult for the hitters to center up on that ball. And Aki is a big time winner. He's a lot of postseason experience. He's done his job in those areas, and we hope he'll get a chance this year to do more. And the defense will try to help him out here this afternoon. Brought to you by Dobbs. The Cardinals have Holiday Borges and Oscar Tavares in the outfield from left to right. Johnny Peralta and Colton Wong both homered yesterday. They're up the middle. Matt Carpenter and Matt Adams at the corners. And A.J. Pierzynski, who caught Lackey some a year ago with the Red Sox, will catch here this afternoon. There's a look at Carlos Gomez, one of the best leadoff hitters in the National League, has power, speed, very good defensive player plays with a lot of flair and it'll be Gomez Lucroy and Braun here in the first against John Lackey Cardinals played an outstanding game here yesterday very good relief pitching the last couple of innings from Nishek and Rosenthal, they closed out a 9-7 victory. And Lackey ready for his first pitch as a Cardinal, and it's a swing and a miss on a big cut from Gomez. Gomez has two hits and three plate appearances against John Lackey. Swinging for the fences again, isn't it? Not exactly the type of swing you expect from a leadoff man, but he does have 15 home runs on the year. And 103 strikeouts. That's a lot of strikeouts for a leadoff man, but so dangerous in a lot of ways. His on base percentage, not as good as Matt Carpenter's. Won't walk as much. Definitely a free swinger, and he strikes out. And John Lackey's career as a Cardinal is underway. And you can, I'm sure there's a little extra emotion for John Lackey and he comes out there and always impressive when you strike out the first batter of a game and of course the Cardinals behind John Lackey are looking to pick up a game in the standings in the central and they'd be one game out with a victory here today. You mentioned Lackey's a winner Al you mentioned the 149 career wins at Lackey has in the American League against just 114 losses and another strike from Lackey and you also mentioned that Lackey and Brzezinski have teamed up together the first 18 starts for Lackey this year Brzezinski was back behind the plate in Boston coming in throwing strikes Lackey in his last three outings a two and one record Went 20 innings in those three games and allowed just 14 hits, but he did walk nine batters in those 20 innings. But no sign of control issues in the early going here. Facing Jonathan Lucroy, the all star catcher for Milwaukee, the 0 2. Lucroy did a nice job. He replaced Yadier Molina on the all star roster, and then he went two for two with two doubles. In the All Star game, he has 35 doubles on the season, second in the National League. The 0 2 is popped up. Krasinski back towards the screen, and he makes the play. You mentioned very tall pitcher John Lackey. We'll look at his delivery, the downhill delivery you were talking about. Yeah, not a lot of wasted motion there. He kind of tucks away, but. When he gets on top, he releases the ball from a certain angle, and they just say that hitters have a tough time picking the ball up or really centering the ball. And with his swing and a miss, strikeout, and then a pop up, that's an indication you're not really seeing the ball well. Brings in Ryan Braun, waves at that 
slider from Lackey. His slider is really his best pitch. In fact, the five pitches that he throws, the four-seamer, sinker, curve, slider, and change, really mirror in terms of velocity and usage what Matt Garza throws. They're almost the same guy in terms of their pitch selection, and each has a very good breaking ball. Well, Lackey has had success against Milwaukee. It was just one start, but he won eight innings and got that victory. The Cardinals have had good success and beat up on Garza, particularly this year. And today's winner, Justin Masterson. Gave up a few more runs than he would like to, but you could tell he was a little rusty, and you could tell there was a lot to work with and a lot to build on. And I expect his next time out uh, to be a little bit better. Looking forward to that. The 0-2 to Braun. Again, ahead in the count. Line down the right field line. This could be a problem. And it one hops off the right field wall. Tavares on the one hop. Good throw in, but not in time to get Ryan Braun. And it's time to look at our Toyota keys to the game, Al. Well, the one thing you want to do is contain Ramirez. Ramirez, in the last eight years, he's just been a Cardinal killer. The lowest batting average he's had during that time is 326, and this year for 455 against St. Louis. And you want the success that Adams has had. He's six for eight against Garza. You want that to continue. You also want the offense that we saw yesterday to continue. A lot of line drives yesterday. It was fun. A lot of double-digit base hits and almost in runs. Another strike one. That one came back over the outside corner to Ramirez. Ten for his last 19. 286 means somebody has gotten him out 72% of the time. How did they do that? Well, we'll ask John Lackey because he's 0 for 2 against the Cardinal right-hander. Ahead in the count again, 0-2. He couldn't finish off Ryan Braun, who now has three doubles in this series, four hits in this series, and it's just four for his last 21. Look at the ratio right there. 14 pitches thrown, just one ball. The 0-2. Hard hit over the head of Peralta in the left field. Maybe too many strikes in the early going for John Lackey as Ramirez hurts the Cardinals again. one nothing Milwaukee. He just added to his 455 average this year against St. Louis pitching. Ball stays up, and he just puts a tomahawk on it. Lackey really... Took his time, made sure that Braun was not getting a big lead at second base, and it might have sacrificed going to the plate. That brings in Ricky Wicks. He's been a pinch hitter primarily for Ron Renicky this season. Nine for 40. Has a lot of power and late on that swing. Strike one. Weeks has been supplanted as the regular second baseman. For Milwaukee by Scooter Jeanette, who's been giving the day off today. He aggravated his hamstring a bit yesterday. Came out as part of a double switch that had more to do with his hamstring than the game situation. You saw the 0 for 7. That's been on the road trip for Ricky Weeks. 0 for 1 in this series, and on the year he's 0 for 6 against St. Louis. A lot of 0 for's. And really. Not much damage he's done on the road, but still, you have to respect his power. Waves at a curveball, one and two. And again, Lackey ahead in the count. He was ahead of Braun and lost him, and then also lost Ramirez. But you like the stuff of John Lackey here in the first inning, despite the Brewers' run.
blocked by Pruszynski, but it goes over the glove and back to the backstop on the curveball in the dirt. Got a glove on it, and it popped up, but ended up going back to the screen. That advances Ramirez to second base. See the breaking ball out there and way off the plate, tries to backhand it and goes off the glove, just as you said, and the runner advances. Ricky Weeks attended Southern University where he was a two-time All-American. He was the Golden Spikes Award winner as the best amateur player in the United States. And he's worked a full count here against John Lackey. He was a finalist for the 2003 Sullivan Award as the top amateur athlete in the United States. Won the Dick's Dick Hauser Trophy from the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association. He led the country in hitting 495 in 2003. And a strikeout victim here. That ends the first. Brewers on the board. Those baseballs are what the Cardinals are hoping to hit very hard here this afternoon as they did yesterday. A lot of line drives. Cardinals offense was right on time. Here's their order here this afternoon. Matt Carpenter getting ready for his first plate appearance. He'll be followed by Colton Wong and Matt Holliday. Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta, A.J. Perzinski in the middle of the lineup. Oscar Tavares, the right fielder, hits seventh. Peter Borges will be in center field in that eighth. And John Lackey. An 093 career average, just four major league hits in his career, will pitch in bat ninth. And the Milwaukee starter, their starting pitching's been very good, Matt Garza. Well, Matt Garza, see his numbers, 500 record on the year. And it's kind of been an up and down season, kind of like a lot of uh, depending on how many runs they score, but he's also a 500 pitcher in his career against St. Louis. Nine starts, three and three, with a 4.81 ERA. But this year, he's really had a tough time. He's 0 and 2 with an 8 ERA, and he's 0 and 2 with a nine and a half ERA in four career starts here at Bush Stadium. Until that trend continues. Garza, one of those pitchers to me, Al, that can be really, really good, or he can be hittable. One of the two, and he ends up as a 500 pitcher, as you mentioned. Not just against the Cardinals, but in his career, he's 74 and 74. But he did throw a no hitter in right. 2010 when he was with the Rays. Matt Carpenter, 383 on base percentage. We'll try to get things going for St. Louis here in the bottom half of the first, swinging at the first pitch, flares it down the left via line, and that. Reaches the stand. The 
Sumner really the table setter. You see his numbers, but just one for eight. He does have five walks against Garza. Hard hit right to the first baseman, Mark Reynolds, and he takes it off his shoe tops for out number one. The ball was stung by Matt Carpenter. You've seen Reynolds, the first baseman. The Dobbs Brewers defense has Ricky Weeks and Elliot Herrera up the middle. Aramis Ramirez, very good fielding third baseman. The outfield, Chris Davis. Carlos Gomez and Ryan Braun, Luke Roy, the catcher, and Garza, your pitcher today. Interesting that Mark Reynolds, who struggles against Lackey, is in playing first base, and Lyle Overbay, who has very good numbers, is not. But here he is. He can hit his home runs, but he's also got a hole in his bat with a ton of strikeouts. Over 100 strikeouts in part time play, but you're right, Overbay, a 344 hitter against Lackey, but not in the lineup today. A bit curious. The Cardinals' best hitter against Matt Garza, in some ways, John Jay, who is not available today, dealing with wrist issues. John Jay, 8 for 13 with a home run against Garza. 615 average. Also, Tony Cruz, who caught yesterday, three for five against Garza. And Prasinski, four for 18, but he does have two home runs. But I think it's catching uh, Lackey. Long pops it up. Right side of the infield. Looks like it'll be Reynolds again, fighting the sun a little bit. Retires long. Guards only needs uh, his catcher and his first baseman. So far, Matt Holiday hoping to change that. 269 batting average for Matt, 11 home runs, 57 RBIs, and now five of those home runs have come since the All Star game. He's yeah, starting he's, to heat up. Traditionally, he's always been a good second half hitter, and hopefully that trend will continue. An interesting shift on him. It's more in the infield as they play him to pull the ball in the infield. Actually, the center fielder is playing a little bit shading towards right, but he had so many balls up the middle. Ballpark Village. On the count of three, raise your arms and wave to Al Roboski. They're so obedient over there. Hi, friends. Didn't know you had that much power. <laughs> no, they just love you that much, Al. Don't you love Al Roboski? See? Look at that. That guy can hardly contain himself. Ground ball left side. Herrera throws out. Matt Holiday, so a quick one, two, three inning for Garza. Just underway in St. Louis. One nothing Milwaukee.
Davis will lead things off for the Brewers. Rick Horton with Al Roboski. Jim Hayes with us as well. And let's go down to Jim. I know, Jim, you've got some more news on Colton Wong, the Cardinals' second baseman. Yeah, Ricky, no question about it. It was the Wong show last night. Three hits for Colton, including a home run, three RBIs. He had been scuffling a bit prior to breaking out. 0 for 5 with three strikeouts the night before. Two of his previous 18. Colton says he was just swinging too hard. If you recall, Colton had five homers in seven games just after returning from the DL. And there is a chance, he says, that he got into some bad habits. He says he gets better results when he just takes his normal swing. Guys, as he put it, quote, I'm still learning how to not try to do too much. Davis pops up to Adams. Jim, I want to follow up on that. Uh, Mike Matheny had a funny reaction when you brought up Colton's comments. and. And he was uh, wanting to maybe get a little scouting report on you, from you, perhaps, on Colton Wong. Yeah, I said Colton said he was uh, swinging too hard prior to last night. He said he had a homer last night. Mike has been preaching that, that this is a team that is capable of putting up some power numbers. Not that Colton is a home run hitter by any stretch. He says, guys, we're trying to do a little too much. When Colton takes his normal swing, he has a little pop, as they say, Ricky. John Lackey facing Mark Reynolds with one out at the top of the second inning. And, Jim, I also want to ask you about Pat Neshek. I know you had him on the pregame show and uh, believe that he really had an important part of the game yesterday. But first, a long one to left. The power of Mark Reynolds. Al, you talked about it. A very dangerous bat. An all-or-nothing hitter. And he got it all there. 16th home run allowed by Lackey, and that is the 19th home run, 39th RBI for Mark Reynolds. And you mentioned that part time player, his first year over here, and he's maybe staying, uh, getting a permanent address there for a while. He can live with his strikeouts if he does this. And breaking ball stayed right on down and in and, and hit to the short part of the field. But there was no doubt. Those power guys can hit mistakes, can't they? Yes, that would be a mistake. And it certainly was. Elian Herrera will hit with one out here in the second inning. Two-nothing Brewers now. But let's go back to Pat Neshek, Jim. And, again, he had a big inning yesterday for the Cardinals. Yeah, that was a key scoreless inning in his new number 37. He had given up his old number 41 to John Lackey. And because Neshek is having... Such a good season. He told me he wasn't quite sure if he should give it up. So he called his mom. Mom said, don't do it. She's superstitious. Well, Pat did it anyway. And when he called his mom after the game last night to say it's okay, he pitched well. She hung up on him. <laughs> Pat told me they've talked it over since then. He and mom are okay. Still a little business to take care of. Nishak and Lackey still negotiating on a price for that number 41, Rick. Perhaps he should have his mom do the negotiation for him. You know, Lackey first said, well, maybe I'll, I'll get a watch. It's not unheard of to get a Rolex watch for giving up your number. But Nishek, who is a card baseball card collector, he wants a card. Fly ball to left. Out number two. One's, one man's treasure, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, I think uh, ever since Jim Hayes gave Colton Wong the tag little pop, he kind of got into a bad habits of swinging too hard. But uh, I guess the, he, Wong's uh, hitting coach, Jim Hayes, has got him straightened out now. I'm here. I'm here. Jim, Al, talking about you calling Colton Little Pop. I heard you uh, actually mentioned that to him. Did he forgive you? Yeah, he doesn't like that nickname, so I'm not trying to put it, put it on him anymore. So... We don't want you in trouble with Colton. It's all Card good. Cardinals in trouble are in the early going down 2 nothing.
your photo using STL Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Cardinal fans have their hands full today and the Cardinals have their hands full trying to deal with Matt Garza. Seven and seven record for Garza, 23rd start of the season, a good first inning for him. And he will face Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta, and A.J. Pierzynski in the bottom of the second inning. Mini Clydesdales today. So many uses for those mini Clydesdales. I'm going to get mine to West, youngest grandson. What are you going to do with yours? I'm not, gonna hit, I'm not going to hit my buddy on top of the head with it, that's for sure. They really are cute little miniature Clydesdales. Well, you know, my wife is a horse lover, so she's got a birthday coming up in December, so that's probably what I'll give to her. Wow. Wow. Don't tell her. Trust me, you better <laughs> better get something in addition to it. Probably will. Probably. Matt Adams hitting 311, fourth in the National League in batting. One of the things you like about Matt is not just a power hitter. He's a guy that makes good contact. He's right up on the plate, has good plate coverage. I don't think teams are really very sure how to pitch to him. Exactly. Now they started out with a real exaggerated pull shift on him, and now you're seeing more clubs almost playing straight away. Ground ball and just foul and a wasted effort by Mark Reynolds, who's been busy in the early going. As you mentioned, Adam six for eight in his career against Garza. And he has the leading average in the National League against right-handed pitching. Still work to be done when he faces left-handed pitching, but because of him being a good defensive player, we're seeing him play every single day. And he'll get better at hitting lefties. Just the more you see him, the more custom you're getting to it. up and in he said he's got good plate coverage he's up on the plate and Garza wonder if that ball just got away from him cut her in perhaps I just wondering just fastball just up and in he's mad at himself so when a hitters had success and of course you've got to change you got to try and hit ball make your good pitches but keep it out of the middle of the plate. And Garza obviously did that. So the leadoff runner aboard for St. Louis, Johnny Peralta, who homered yesterday. Fifteen home runs on the season. One shy of the franchise record home runs for a shortstop belongs to Edgar Renteria the 1 0 grounded to the shortstop Herrera two weeks and on the first easy double play there just what Garza wanted Herrera not the shortstop that Segura is but a pretty simple play for him there absolutely Right there, fire to your second baseman covering the bag, and then with plenty of time, Weeks doesn't have to worry about Adams cutting bearing down on it. Gene Segura with the off day today, and Ron Renicky wanting to get him a little extra rest. He's been dealing with some leg issues, and as well as Jeanette, the second baseman, and with an off day to follow, they felt like they could get him a couple days in a row. So, new middle infield for Milwaukee this afternoon. 
Yeah, the Brewers are in first place. They're going to leave St. Louis in first place. It's a question where the Cardinals be one game back or three games back. Good off-speed pitch there way out in front was Pierzynski. Four for 14, but two home runs off of Garza. He will leave some pitches in, in the middle of the plate. The one two takes it the other way, but right to Chris Davis. And Garza retires the Cardinals here in the second. Two nothing Milwaukee. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer for 75 years. Warm summer afternoon in St. Louis. Series on the line here this afternoon. Carlos Gomez struck out in the first. And he leads things off here, top of the third inning against Lackey, and quickly 0 and 2. Gomez struck out, Lucroy popped out, and then the Brewers picked up a run, a double to right by Ryan Braun, and a base hit for Ramirez made it 1 0, and then a Mark Reynolds homer in the second, and there's your scoring. Firing strikes and struck out Gomez the first time up. Got ahead of him, tried that breaking ball, but bounced it on the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch. Strikes out Gomez for the 105th time this season. On Saturday, August 16th, celebrate the first class of the Cardinals Hall of Fame with the 2014 Hall of Fame inductees plaque courtesy of Edward Jones. 25,000 fans, 16 and older, will receive the collectible plaque highlighting the Cardinal greats, Jim Edmonds, Marty Marion, Willie McGee, and, of course, Mike Shannon. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Congratulations to all of those 
Hall of Famers. Base hit to left for Lucroy with one out. And we should also congratulate Tim McCarver. Our own Tim McCarver on Fox Sports Midwest, who will be inducted into the St. Louis Walk of Fame tomorrow. Ceremonies going on tomorrow in the loop, so congratulations to Tim for that. And the other congratulations in order, it's Fred Bird's birthday today. What'd you get him? Bird seat. I got him a miniature Clydesdale horse. Oh, that you gave to your wife last inning? I'll find something else. Some other giveaway. <laughs> right. <laughs> we had a backpack yesterday. 1 0 to Ryan Braun. Doubled and scored in the first. Interesting mixture so far for Lackey Alley. Seems to have some very sharp pitches, but he's made a couple of mistakes. Yeah, it just kind of. Left a couple balls up and over the middle of the plate. But, you know, he still has uh, got good stuff. 11 game winner in the American League looking for his career 150th win. He's pitching on a little extra rest, too. It's good for some, and others uh, don't have good results. Really hard to say why, too. Yeah, I some mean, guys like the feel, some guys like the strength, and you kind of want both. But right, the Cardinals are doing it with uh, Lance Lynn. He'll get a couple extra days when he starts on Tuesday against Boston. Worked with Shelby Miller. Cardinals gave him some time off. Good pitch there from Lackey. By the way, Shelby Miller at 6-3 would have to be the point guard if this Cardinal pitching staff was on a basketball team. Lackey, Masterson, both 6-6. Wainwright's 6-7. Lance Lynn is 6-5 or 6-6. Waka, 6-6. Shelby 6-3 but has to play the point. Up the middle, base hit, Ryan Braun. Two runners aboard for Milwaukee. And that's their fifth hit already. Rosinski set up outside and leaves it down and away, but good plate coverage and hits it back up the middle on the pitch away. It's interesting in this series. You would have thought that game one, the Cardinals had a pitching matchup with Wainwright and Peralta. But uh, you still would favor Adam Wainwright. He had a rough game yesterday. You didn't know what you're going to get, but you knew that Kyle Loesch has been pitching brilliantly and is such a good pitcher, but he got roughed up. And here kind of Garza and Lackey, you would say Lackey would have the, the edge. And it's gone to Garza early. Ground ball to third. Carpenter to second for one. Wong on to Adams for the double play. Perfectly executed. Right on time.
night at the ballpark. That's August 15th. The Cardinals battle the Padres. Buy your Mizzou theme tickets at cardinals.com slash theme and get a limited edition Cardinals hat. You get your tickets. Wear your black and gold. We'll see you at Mizzou night on August 15th. Garza facing the bottom of the order for St. Louis. Tavares, Borges, and Lackey. Oscar getting the bulk of the playing time, I would guess, from here on out. With Alan Craig going to Boston. Craig, by the way, did not play yesterday in his second day as a Red Sox. But we will see him next week. Cardinals with an off day tomorrow and then they host the Boston Red Sox for a three game series so we'll see Joe Kelly and Alan Craig hard hit to left but easily handled by Davis and Oscar Tavares Al has had so many of those kind of at bats right that's a good at bat there no production but I think he's done better than his 217 batting average indicates I would think so and He's on a little three-game hitting streak, two for six in this series. Now, well, two for seven and three for 11, but a lot of fly balls to left field. And I think when Mike Matheny says he hasn't embarrassed himself, he's held his own, there is a good example of it. Right. What a cutie. What can be better than that? So far, the uh, the blouse is clean. So far. Stay tuned. Peter Borges. Can you wave? Uh, Hi, sweetie. Hi, wave to Al. The 1-1. One, one. Taken low. Gorgeous at 222. This is one for seven in this series. I mentioned the attack yesterday out for the Cardinals. 12 hits in the game. But a lot of line drives. Not just the hits, but a lot of balls just smoked. Colton Wong with a double home run single. Johnny Peralta's home run was a 429-foot shot at Tavares hit the ball hard. Tony Cruz hit the ball hard. Really a good showing. Yeah, a lot of balls were hit hard and just hoped that would continue. And it's still early. You're only down by two runs, but you're looking for your first hit. Borges strikes out on the off speed pitch. Strikeout number one for Garza. And we want to remind you, you can follow every Cardinals game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day and more. Download at the App Store or you can visit Cardinals.com today. John Lackey. Four for 43 in his career, 093 average. That's not very many at bats in a long career. 12 seasons in the big leagues. And you would think with interleague play you'd have uh, more at bats than that, but uh, Justin Masterson yesterday helped his own cause, a base hit, sacrifice, or to run. Strikeouts in a row for Garza. On to the fourth.
Milwaukee. Two runs on five hits. The Cardinals looking for their first hit here this afternoon. In support of their starter, John Lackey. And Al, as you've mentioned, he has been a big game pitcher in his career. You can see how the win percentage isn't a whole lot of difference, but look at a point lower in the ERA when he's in the postseason. And the batting average is down in postseason. So let's hope we can get him back to the postseason. What do you have, 16 games? I think a postseason experience. Twice he's had the clinching of a World Series game, including last year, game six against uh, the Cardinals. I got my Clydesdale. I want to go home, Mom. <laughs> Ricky Weeks will lead things off for Milwaukee. Weeks, Davis, and Reynolds. I just, I just read the lips in that little girl. She said, I want to go home and secure my Clydesdale before Ricky takes it from me, gives it to somebody else. I would never do that. I would never do that, Al. You know that. Maybe she's just as disappointed because the Cardinals don't have the early lead. Big family day here at the ballpark. Yeah. Everybody wants to celebrate Fred Bird's birthday. <laughs> the ice cone. Snow cones. Snow cones are a big deal. By the way, some other mascots on hand to celebrate with Fred Bird. Tough play for Carpenter, and he throws out Ricky Weeks. Nice play coming in by Matt. And you're playing back, and you see the little swinging bunt. You got to come in and throw on the run. Thought for a minute it was going to be a high throw, but you got a big target over there in Matt Adams. Nice play by Carpenter. Mentioned the mascots out. St. Louis Rams Rampage is here today, and Louis from the Blues and the Mariner Moose is on hand. How about that? All the way from Seattle Slugger from the Kansas, Kansas City, City Royals and Cincinnati's Mr. Red, Le Red Legs. They all on the field today celebrating with Fred Bird. It was like fun for the young fans here today. You know, the birth of Fred Bird goes all the way back to Marty Hedden. It was Marty's idea. Marty, a long time Cardinal employee who I think took the games, uh, the losses harder than all the players. But Marty was an extraordinary promoter of Cardinal baseball throughout the community. He was incredible. And he would know on, let's say, Fred Bird's birthday or whatever special day at the ballpark, whatever it might be, you know, Mizzou Day at the ballpark, he would go up to the Mizzou people and say, you know, we're. Eight and one on Mizzou Day. And he would know that. I mean, he was as superstitious as the players were and loved his Cardinal baseball. You've seen the tribute to Marty here downstairs. I have. Just a small portion of Trinket City. His uh, office was just had every prototype, some that were made, some that weren't made. Uh, anything that had the Cardinal logo on it and there was no place to sit in his his uh, office but it was fun to look at it sure was hard hit right to Peralta on one hop throws out the speedy Davis so many things going on at the ballpark every day obviously we focus on the field and performance of the Cardinal players but there's always plenty to do autograph sessions going on and music ballpark village the food the family connection the celebrations people celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and people just wanting to go somewhere where they don't care what time it is <laughs> 
hard to find that in this world today and the baseball game is often a good escape from that. Yeah, it used to be that a lot of people would escape their personal problems and like you say just come to a ballpark and just enjoy the atmosphere. There's Mr. Red Legs. Cardinals trailing, but he's still smiling. Yeah, you got a couple of generations there, but a lot of kids out here, and I think part of that was the draw of the Clydesdales. You're talking baseball, and you're talking life here at the ballpark. Two and one to Mark Reynolds, who homered in the second. A little more careful with him here. Reynolds didn't like that call. He thought that was outside. Now that's one of those situations. It's only strike two. Why? Why are you going to let this ruin your entire bat? A little bit wide. You saw Zinski pull it back a little bit to the corner, but he hits with the open stance. He wants something on the inner part of the plate. The 2-2 two -two. fouled back. You know the temper of those guys that went to the University of Virginia. How about the power to go along with it? He's got power, but sometimes the bat must have holes in it. And you can see, you know, he's just wanting something inside, something he can jerk. The 2-2 two -two from Lackey fouls it off. It both he and Weeks similar in a way in terms of the number of strikeouts they get and their power and you know that's valuable to a team to have that potential coming off the bench. Yeah you might get the strikeout but you might get a game changer too. Well for it seems like quite a few years the Cardinals have been always on their bench no threat. And what we mean is exactly what you're talking about. There's somebody on the bench that you fear because he could turn a game around with it one swing. Hi sweetie. Enjoying Cardinal baseball I bet. Hey, come on, Lackey, strike him out. Good idea. Come on Lackey strike him out. He's training her very well. Doesn't strike him out there. Fouls off that delivery. Three and two still to Mark Reynolds. Ricky, one of the we'll talk, just look at the pinch hitters. Cardinal pinch hitters are 29 for 130. No home runs, 10 RBIs. Milwaukee. Pitch hit home runs and 18 RBIs with 28, 29 hits. Reynolds, another pitch he didn't like. That one's strike three. One, two, three inning for Lackey. Top of the order when we come back.
Cardinals great Chris Carpenter. 25,000 fans, 16 and older, will take home a Chris Carpenter bobblehead featuring his two world championship trophies. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. 2-0 Milwaukee. A lot of fun here at the ballpark. Low scoring game so far, but... You look at the Cardinals and the Brewers, when they play together, Al, they normally average 10 runs a game. Cardinals playing the Pirates in 2008 were the most with a minimum of 10 games in the last few years. That was at 11 and a half runs per game. But Brewers and Cardinals normally means runs in 2014. Yeah, the odd thing is the Cardinals are out homering Milwaukee in the head-to-head -head series. Looking for their first hit here this afternoon. Will it be Matt Carpenter? The Cardinals have hit 18 home runs against Milwaukee, the most homers against any club this year. There's the numbers you were talking about earlier. Garza against the Cardinals, the high ERA, 0-2 this season. Cardinals hit Loesch well yesterday. Normally, tremendous command for Kyle Loesch, but he was a bit erratic. That's why I said it's kind of been an odd series. We expected a lot more from Madam Wainwright. Right. I'm sure they expected much more from Kyle Loesch. And took a little off that breaking ball and got Carpenter out in front. We've seen all kinds of food here at the ballpark. How about some ice cream? Well, one thing we are proving here with our shots is there's a lot of things that you can enjoy at the ballpark that aren't on the field only. A lot of good food choices on a lazy summer afternoon. Garza has that one. Two outs. The Cardinals have not figured him out yet. No. Garza mentioned it. No hitter. A few years back when he was with Tampa Bay. And the only blemish on his game today is the hit batter. And at Adams, but then he was erased in part of a double play ball, so Cars has faced the minimum. Strike at the knees to Holiday, who bounced out in the first. STL's a little large on that hat, isn't it? Whatever works. You definitely read it. Have the Cardinal spot the Milwaukee enough? Can we start hitting now? I'm ready. Low pitch count for Garza. Just 37 pitches working in the fourth inning. He's been very efficient. Got the double play in the second inning. And the most pitches he's thrown in an inning is 10. It's extremely consistent. Say 12 13 is a good inning. 10's really good. Just eight in this inning. For Garza.
Uh, passed along there with Garza. Four solid innings for him, and first pitch is bunted right back through the wickets. An easy play for John Lackey, and he just missed it. As simple as that. On a bunt that was not intended to go back to Lackey. And I'm sure that's going to be scored as an error for the new Cardinal pitcher. Well, we hope so, but it, like you said, just a simple little ground ball. He tried to go down on it, goes right through his legs, and then he's wondering why and how. Just stay down, doesn't it? So an error on Lackey. Now a bunting situation for Garza. Herrera runs well. Very shallow in the outfield for the Brewers pitcher. Who does not hit very well. But he's swinging there and he hits one to right field. Tavares deep enough. And we'll take that. I wonder if Ron Renicki thought that the Cardinals were being so aggressive on the bunt that it made more sense to let Garza swing away. But from the Cardinals' point of view, I think that's yeah. a big plus. I, I agree. We'll take that out and not allow the runner to advance. 091 career hitter at the plate in Garza. Thank you. Six sacks this year, 19 in his career. Gomez, a strikeout victim twice. Herrera gets the verbal sign from the first base coach, Garth Orge, and there he goes. Ball popped up. The Cardinals try to pretend it's still in the infield. They fool Herrera for a minute, but Peralta makes the play, and Herrera scampers back. Colton Long tried to sell him on that ball being hit on the ground, and for a moment it worked, but the ball was in the air too long. I'll watch when he takes off, see if he looks in. And that's what he did. He never looked in, but he did pick up the outfielders racing to the ball. And Peralta was in his vision, so he could see that they were reacting to a ball put in play. And he knew he had to just go halfway and then go back as he's seeing the ball kept being caught. Good view of Lackey holding on Herrera. And he misses outside. Most of the time when you hold that long, the runner, you know, takes the spring out of his legs, but most of the time the hitter will step out or the pitcher will back off. Fastball away, didn't want it, wants the slider. Decent lead, not going. Ball two to Lucroy. Looking in to see Mike Bethany and what they what they want to do to defend against the runner. They want the slider. Now he wants didn't want the fastball. He wants the curveball. And it's right down the heart of the plate as Luke Roy was looking for something harder than that. Luke Roy, a good hitter. We talked about his two strike approach. Focusing here on the Brzezinski lackey communication. Played together this year in Boston. Pass ball away. And that's the short swing of Luke Roy. Tom Pace to hit 51 home runs. If he does so, he'll 
over 50. It'll be the third in their franchise history. Doubles. Two and one the count. There goes the runner. Late swing and a foul. Luke Wright trying to shoot that through the right side. And that be stolen. There's no way Prasinski would have a chance to throw him out. Two outs. Work on the hitter. Doesn't matter. He can't can't score if you get the hitter out. Slider. There he goes again in the dirt. Throw to second is high and to the second base side by Przinski. Stolen base. Herrera, his third of the season. And remember, he should be out anyway on his bunt attempt. Right. Board on an error, but now in scoring position with a good jump again. Off speed pitch, too, so it really wasn't that bad of a throw. But. 77th stolen base for Milwaukee this season. Cardinals have 47. Very good with two strikes is Lou Croy. The 3 2 pitch is grounded foul. So this Brewers team runs some, they have power. Got some average guys in this lineup. Lou Croy over 300. Gomez 294, so really interesting mix for Ron Renicki in his fourth year leading the Brewers. They'll score quite a bit more than the Cardinals. They're one of the top scoring teams in the league, but they'll go through some droughts too. Hard hit right field, but Tavares makes the play about chest high with one hand. Lackey gets through the fifth. Cardinals trail by two. Missouri Friends of Injured Marines golf outing on August 24th. The 10th annual fundraiser supports the Injured Marine Semper Fi Fund. You can donate or participate at the Country Club at St. Albans. Go to SemperFi.com to register. He's out, there. He's out there a couple years ago for the Marines. And see, no hits in this game. 
allowed. Only one base runner. That was Matt Adams who was hit by a pitch, and then he was erased on a double play off the bat of Peralta. August 24th in Philadelphia. I beat at that Marine Golf Tournament again. And General Conroy. Commandant to the Marine Corps out there. Very nice. And twice a big Cardinal fan. Which reminds me, we'll be looking forward to our This One's For You telecast. That's on the 19th. Looking forward to that. Always an important and special Cardinals baseball game when we broadcast to our service men and women. Look forward to that. Telecast 2 0 on Matt Adams. Hitters count and even better now at 3 0. Cardinals have had one base runner. That was Matt Adams. He got hit by a pitch to lead off the second inning and was erased on a double play off the bat of Johnny Peralta. Will he be swinging here? I don't think so, and he isn't. And it's a strike on the outside corner. Adams doesn't like that call. Littles, our home plate umpire, and there's another pitch off the plate, and he calls a strike. Cardinals. Consistent, both sides. Yep, Cardinals have got a couple of those. The Mark Reynolds at bat, late swing, three and two now to Matt Adams. 12 home runs, 47 RBIs, and now, as we've already mentioned, Pat Paris, Jason Isringhausen have already jinxed the no hitter, so. It's just Let's a matter of time. Yeah, just make it happen now. It's gentlemen, all their fault. Gentlemen caught a nice fly ball or foul ball. It looks like they still give away the Cardinal contracts. I don't know. Ushers used to do that. It looked like he was taking down his name or something, but see, filling out the. I guess they do. Maybe that's a waiver for liability in case he broke a finger there. What do you think? It's because I already gave Ann a couple of attorneys numbers to take care of your family problem. <laughs> now you're getting back into legal legal ease. The three two hit hard on the ground fair and down the line. Adams rounds first. He's headed for two. First hit for the Cardinals. Lead off double for Matt Adams and the crowd responds. We talked about Matt Adams and his success against Matt Garza. He now is seven for nine with two doubles and a home run. Really a hard hit ball right over the first base bag and down the line. And Reynolds, who a lot of times we see him at the other side at third base, playing first base now in somewhat of a platoon. But Lyle Overbay doesn't make the play. Oh, well, we got the hit in. Now let's get the first run. Johnny Peralta at the plate. Strike one, and we will send uh, Matt Garza to uh, Jason Isringhausen to talk about that jinxing. But the difference maker brought to you by BJC. Johnny Peralta, Colton Long have had 22 combined home runs in the middle of the infield for St. Louis. 15 by our batter Johnny Peralta and they both homered last night the last time they did that was against Milwaukee also one and one Peralta leads the team with 26 doubles. Matt Adams now has 25. Andrew Peralta one away from tying the record of home runs, franchise record, home runs by a shortstop. Edgar Renteria did it in 2000 and hit 16. But also Daryl Spencer, 1960, had 16 home runs at Cardinal shortstop.
Cardinals trying to get on the board here in the bottom of the fifth. Adams the runner at second. The one two to Peralta backs him off the plate two and two. Lackey. The way Garza has dominated this game it's hard to believe that the tying run is represented in the batter's box. Crowd has had fun today, but they haven't had much to cheer for. They're ready to stand up and yell a bit. See if Johnny Peralta can make that happen. Strikeout number five for Matt Garza. Make that three for Matt Garza. John Lackey has four strikeouts on the Cardinals side. Lackey has settled in. Garza has been very tough. Krasinski now 0 for his last seven. Flew out to left to end the second. On the ground right side booted by Reynolds but he stays with it to retire Perzinski. Tickets are on sale now for the 2014 Cardinals Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by Edward Jones. The event will take place inside Fox Sports Midwest live in Ballpark Village and it'll be at 10:30 a.m. on Saturday August 16th. General admission tickets are $18 each. You can purchase them at cardinals.com slash HOF. There is Fox Sports Midwest Live at Ballpark Village. Who wants the Cardinals to score some runs here? I bet they all do. Oscar Tavares. Lined out. First pitch right down central. Strike one at 94 from Garza. Mentioned both pitchers right around 92 to 94 in terms of fastball. The sliders at 85. Change ups about 85. And they both throw a slower curve. Lackey Garza around 80 miles an hour. The 0 1 in the dirt. Blocked by Luke Roy. Home run in San Diego. His first home run was in his first game, his second plate appearance at the big leagues. Perfect time right now. Outfield is deep for Tavares. Slightly to pull on the infield. He's got that long swing. And he has an opportunity right now to thrill this crowd. The 2 1 outside, 3 and 1. Good hitting count. Redbird and Slugger, they're ready. And there's Rampage back there, too. Cardinals not able to advance Matt Adams from second to third with nobody out. Line drive foul. Peralta struck out, then Brzezinski grounded up. Productive out would make it two to one now.
but Peralta with the strikeout. Adams now the runner at third. Three and two the count to Tavares. Broken bat, ground ball right side. The bat comes all the way back to the screen. As Garza saws off Tavares, Cardinals strand a runner. 2 0 Milwaukee. Earn 2% back and fan rewards on every purchase, including Cardinals tickets. Plus, with all in pricing, there are no surprise fees at checkout. StubHub, your ticket to upgrades and more. Oscar Tavares bounced out to end the bottom of the fifth inning, but a violent cracked bat here as he gets sawed off. The bat in many pieces including the big part all the way back to the screen you'll see it here the big barrel of the bat Splinter as it comes all the way around the barrel will go right over the head of the umpires and all the way back to the screen out for the sixth inning is John Lackey there's a look at that bat or what's left of it Seth Manus model now, wait a minute. We saw that in, in uh, San, San Diego. That Tavares was using Seth's bat. Well, I know there's hits in it if it's Seth's bat, but. Not anymore in that one. But you usually don't have uh, the position players have better wood than pitchers. You would guess Seth Manus would have gotten a bat order of what? Maybe three bats, four bats for the year. I mean. Not going to use more than that. And they've ended up in Oscar Tavares's locker. One and two to count to Ryan Braun. Two for two here this afternoon against Lackey. Average is up to 293. Brzezinski tries to pull that one back on the outside corner, but not fooling Will Little, who has had, we would say, a generous strike zone in and out. No complaints here. On the field, there seem like they're complaints. But yeah. From hitters. Yeah. Little had a relatively easy night at first base, but first game of the series when he was at second base, he and Mike Matheny saw a disagreement. 
Mike was asked about it. You and I were there when Mike was talking about going out to bring out the lineup card yesterday on purpose just so he could make sure that they were all okay with each other. He said that's part of the professionalism of being an umpire and me being a manager. I have to stand up for myself. They have to stand up for themselves. But I wanted to take out the lineup card just so we could kind of move on from it. Yeah. Look each other in the eye and just be men. And he said he did that with the umpires yesterday and and felt fine about it and moved on. Yeah, I, Mike is very thoughtful in that way. Sure is. But he also he said something that brought back a memory to me. You know, when he talked about how the with the official challenging and you can't argue and. You know, there's, there's come from a ruling in New York. That's the guy I want to argue with, but they don't give me a headset to talk to him. So I got to pick somebody else. But ground ball to short. Peralta gobbles it up and throws out Bronx. The very first year that Tony Larusa and Dave Duncan came to St. Louis, I asked about the difference. And remember, that was back when you had National League umpires and American League umpires. And I asked Dave Duncan, I said, what do you think are the differences between the two leagues and the umpire? And at the time, he said, I, I think they're better umpiring in the National League. But this is a very emotional game, and they don't let you say a word. In the American League, you could at least have a conversation and before you were tossed. Cardinals might get out Ramirez again. Adams calls it out loudly. And Ramirez is retired for the second straight time. Cardinals will take that. Communication, a part of this game. Let's take a listen. Usually the pitcher is going to be the traffic cop. Brzezinski didn't get a good read on it, but Adams did, and you heard him calling it off. But if Brzezinski would have tried to challenge for that ball, it's up to the pitcher to stop one of them and make sure that there's just one guy that's going to be making that play. Be a pretty good collision between Adams and Krasinski. <laughs> I'll say. And Lackey's big enough to stop one of them. Check swing, watch out below. Oh, and two on Ricky Weeks, a strikeout victim in the first, bounced out to Carpenter on a nice play by Matt in the fourth inning. Lackey has really settled down. The 0 2 delivery is out of play. Mentioned the great collegiate career that Ricky Weeks had. He was the number one over uh, first round, second overall of the 2003 draft. When we look at his numbers, you go back to 2007 and find his best year 19 and 9 with an ERA just over three. And he was an all star in 2007 with the Angels. But he has won 10 or more games 11 straight years. 11 straight years. And that's with taking 2012 out of there because he had Tommy John surgery and missed the entire year. But Delman Young was the number one draft pick. The only player selected above Ricky Weeks in 2003. Hard hit to center. Will carry, however, to Peter Borges. A 1-2-3 inning. 
for Lackey, who seems to be getting stronger. this afternoon, 2 nothing Milwaukee, Garza and Lackey. Peter Borges, Lackey and the top of the order for St. Louis due up in the bottom of the sixth inning. And we want to remind you what's on tap, brought to you by Budweiser. The Red Sox are in town beginning on Tuesday, and we will see Joe Kelly and Shelby Miller square off on Wednesday. Adam Wainwright pitches the finale. You can watch those games right here on Fox Sports Midwest. David Ortiz, Big Poppy. Yeah, I was uh, looked at yesterday at the three pitchers that are going to start against the Cardinals in that Boston series. They have a total of six wins this year. Cardinals would like to keep it that way. Exactly. Peter Borges fakes a bunt. Ground ball foul. Okendo still goes to his left well. See how well he throws. Shorten that difference, distance, I mean, and flip it. All right. One there you go. And to the dock. A lot of scoring rallies will start with that eight place hitter. Bunt foul by Borges. Trying to test Ramirez. Borges has three bunt hits. Ramirez is pretty good over at third base, so the element of surprise is is definitely out of there. Two strikes, Ramirez moves all the way back. Cardinals have not centered many balls against Matt Garza. Talked about how that was tough to center the ball off of Lackey, but today it's been Garza that has got the late movement. And Cardinals with only one hit. Ground ball up the middle. Herrera gets rid of it quickly. He knows Borges runs well, but retires the Cardinals center fielder for out number one. Matt Garza. Last 11 starts has a ERA of 2.72. The opponent's batting average also very good. Prior to that, 
the numbers not so good. In fact, he couldn't get out of the first inning against the Nationals in one of those starts. But he is sharp, sharp today. Pitch count still very low for Garza at 65. Working in the sixth. Like he's at 85 pitches. But At 85, should have no problem getting through the seventh inning, but need some run support. Mikey strikes out for the second time. As we promised you earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game, and here it is. You tweet your photos to STL Fan Photo. A chance. To be shown in an upcoming game broadcast, and that is brought to you by AT&T. Uh, Carpenter is starting a two-out route. Cardinals' two-out rally in the second inning last night was a game changer. Cardinals were hoping that'd be a series changer. With two outs in that second inning against Kyle Loesch, a walk to Tony Cruz, Justin Masterson, the pitcher at a base hit, walk to Carpenter, Colt Wong with a two out hit, Holiday with a two out hit. So it can happen. And it led to a five run Cardinals second here last night on their way to a 9 7 victory. Brewers won game one. Six to two. Cardinals actually are. seven to two seven to four because the Cardinals scored too late. Right. Just off the plate there. I'm sure Reynolds is saying yeah sure. Except when I'm bad. Right. Fly ball to left. Davis settles under it. Another one, two, three inning for Garza. On to the seventh.
Chicken McNuggets for just 25 cents each, limited time only. Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Rubber game of the series, Cardinals and Brewers. Milwaukee, 11 games over 500. The Cardinals, seven games over 500. Cardinals have used 11 starting pitchers this season. And John Lackey, the newest Cardinals, had a nice outing here this afternoon. He allowed a run in the first and one in the second. And just five hits. Tired six in a row. And just one batter reached base, and that was on Lackey's own error in the last 11. Chris Davis swings a little bit like Carlos Gomez. He just kind of bails and wails. Wainwright really was. Schooling him on the pitches away in game one of this series. Adam did not have his best outing, but Davis, well, he's just going to try to yank one. They actually say Davis is a better hitter when he hits the ball the other way, but at times gets home run happy and pulls off, pulls that front shoulder and tries to yank it to left. We'll see if Lackey goes back away with him. Seemed like with the pitch he'd want to get him out on, especially with two strikes and the breaking ball slider down and away. Zinski puts down the curveball, puts down the slider, then a fastball, now change it back to the fastball, I think. Looks like he threw a slider. Not happy with what he threw. Curveball. And he misses low, and now the count goes to three and two. Leadoff hitter is Chris Davis, trying to put him away. Actually, a different signal for fastball in and fastball away. So you can shake a fastball, and you just want a different location, and you have to shake back until you get the fastball on the other side. Slider here, hit hard to left, but Holiday makes the play for out number one. Solo home run his first time up. Another line drive to left. Another F7 handled by Holiday. Ninety-three pitches. Really having a potential of a very efficient inning. Your mind. Go I appreciate his courage, though. We see that a lot when the Cubs are in town, but there's a Brewers fan and a Cardinals fan living in harmony. Right, the Cardinal fan reached, looking back, trying to say, "Hey, give me some support," and then the Brewer fan tried to do it. And nobody there. <laughs> I love it. 
2 and 0 oh on Elian Herrera playing shortstop today. Day off for both Scooter Jeanette, who's had a hamstring issue, and Jose Segura, the normal shortstop, who's a very, very good fielder. Herrera not quite at his level defensively, does not have the range and the shortstop agility that Segura has, but he has hit the Cardinals well. Yes, he has. He's came in with a 486 batting average against St. Louis. They acquired him his release from the Angels. So Ron Renicky, who was on Mike Sosha's staff, played together through the Dodger organization, he knew about Herrera, and they picked him up. Base hit to right for Herrera with two outs to prolong the top of the seventh inning. Going to pinch hit up Lyle over Bay. How about that? Yeah. A bit of a hanger there yeah. for Blackie. Breaking ball that stays up, and we mentioned that Lyle over Bay's had good success. 11 for 32, 344 average against John Lackey. So they saved him. That Duke. Or Looks like Zach Duke. There must be something going on with Garza. Just yesterday, Ron Renicky said he kept Kyle Lotion because he wanted to get his bullpen a little bit more rest and needed some innings from him. And going just six innings with Garza today, low pitch count. Yeah, so he must have some kind of an issue, I would imagine. One inning better than five and fly. Used to be the term that we always kind of in a sarcastic way criticize a starter that would want to just kind of pitch effectively enough to qualify for a win and then get out of there. But I'm sure Garza has something that's affecting him to come out of this one the way he's pitching. Mentioned Overbay has hit Lackey really well. Surprised he wasn't in the lineup today. 344 batting average. The Brewers have Scooter Jeanette, Manny Parra left on their bench from the left side, and Martin Maldonado and Gene Segura from the right side. That Manis starts throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. Hard hit to left. You can add to those numbers for Lyle Overbay. Two two out hits for the Brewers and the top of the order in Carlos Gomez. Like you said, Overbay's had great success, but uh, he's been able to neutralize, at least in this game, Carlos Gomez. He's 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. And Mike Matheny making the walk out. Made a move yet? You yeah. mentioned Manus is ready. Well, he may be, you know, a new pitcher, non lackey. He's a veteran. He's a big time pitcher, so he may give him the question. You think you can get him out? And he said yes. Well, you, you know, the Adam Wainwright theory is just start talking about the next hitter before Matheny gets out there and run the meeting yourself. So when the manager actually gets to the plate. He's hearing you talking like how you're going to get the next guy out. And, and he keeps you in. That's what happened with Wainwright in his last start. And perhaps more of the same here. Lackey staying in to face Gomez. I'm OK with that. I, I'm OK with it, but you've got to get the guy out. You get him out, then you know, you've earned the trust. Roll in the dice. 102 pitches for Lackey and strike one to Gomez. 
It seems like so few of his pitches are starting to get up. That's usually an indication your legs start getting a little tired. When your legs get tired, the ball is elevated and you become an exposed pitcher. Still has life on that delivery just off the plate. One and one. Cardinals outfield bunching. Taking the gaps away from Gomez. Extra base threat. The one one. Now two and one. Good pitch there by Lackey. Tied him up, up and in. One pitch away from a very good outing. That's it. Pitch is elevated, but he can't catch up to it. Pitch to the top of the strike zone and above is usually a pitcher's pitch. Wow. Pruszynski was hoping that ball would bounce in fair territory and with Gomez backing up, they'd obviously have an easy out. Because it starts out foul doesn't mean it's going to stay there. So right. It's going to check the spin out on this ball. So once you're kind of holding there, letting it bounce, see if it'll bounce forward, bounce it backward, he picks it up. Crowd urging on John Lackey. The 2 2. In the dirt, blocked by Perzinski. Kind of knew there would probably be the slider, but bounces it up there. And so easy to lay off it. I like this move. Lackey called out Brzezinski and get on the same page, figure out what they want to throw right here. A little confirmation from your catcher that this we got a good game plan. Now execute it. Pitch popped up. Who wants it? Matt Carpenter does. Nice job, John Lackey. Time to stretch in St. Louis. Also, time to hit. Two nothing, Milwaukee. Solid innings for Matt Garza, who has left this game for a pinch hitter. And we are waiting to find out why he's out of this game. Six solid innings, just one Cardinal hit. 
Mark Reynolds homered in the second inning for one of the two Milwaukee runs. John Lackey, seven solid innings. And Matt Adams has the only Cardinals hit so far. Look at John Lackey who made it through that seventh inning. He got Carlos Gomez to pop out with a couple runners aboard. And Garza gives way to the left-hander who's been very busy this year and also very good, Zach Duke. And Zach Duke did run into little problems on Friday night. Two-thirds of an inning, one hit, but two runs and two walks. That snapped a streak of 16 straight scoreless innings pitch for him. He's got 60 strikeouts and 44 innings for Duke. And John Lackey, his debut, seven innings, just two runs allowed. That should be a victory any time. But right now he's on the losing side of this game. Got to get him off the hook. Maybe we can get him a win. It starts right now with Colton Wong. Good slider there from Zach Duke. Lackey probably confused. Why did Justin Masterson get all the runs? <laughs> Don't they like me? And Masterson we got the benefit of all nine runs last night. Of course, he, he could give them one. He wins 8 7. Long grounds out. You get that kind of effort from John Lackey every time out. We're going to have uh, a lot of fun the rest of the way. Well, you go seven innings, you set up your bullpen better. Cardinals have needed another kind of workhorse in their rotation after Michael Waka went down. Still hope that Waka will return in September. Whether he can return as a starter that can go deep into a game is in question. But Lackey certainly has been a durable pitcher. Also in, in September is not that big of a deal. But here's our two new guys. And Lackey on the left, seven innings, seven hits, just two runs. The other side, Masterson got a win, allowing five runs, but had plenty of offense. And there was encouraging signs from both of their appearances. Matt Holliday has bounced out twice, facing Duke for the first time. Fastball inside, 2-0. And certainly an understatement, but the Cardinals need base runners. Trailing by two in the seventh. Have only had two base runners. And both times it was Matt Adams who was hit by a pitch in the second and doubled in the fifth. Holiday has hit Duke well. Very well. 12 for 26th, three doubles, home run. The numbers were Zach Duke, but a lot of that damage was when he was in the rotation for Pittsburgh. He's a different pitcher out of the pen. Hard hit to center field by Holiday. It's deep, and this ball is way out of here. Home run, Holiday, number 12. And he cuts the Brewers' lead to 2 to 1. Holiday, sixth home run and 13th RBI in just 14 games since the All Star break. Hard hit, center field. Gomez on the move, not going to get it. Matt Adams with a single off a left hander. He represents the tying run. 
One it, more look at Matt Holiday. Didn't get it far enough in, and Holiday gives it a ride. Matt Holiday, like you said, traditionally a second half hitter, but he's showing a lot of power. Cardinals are six and seven. As you see, the young man catches the Holiday home run. And he's pretty excited about it. <laughs> so is Dad. Usually when he hits it, well, it's going to be 105 plus miles an hour coming off the bat. And Zach Duke knocked out for the second time in this series. Even more curious now that Matt Garza is not in this game. Johnny Peralta will hit next. Cardinals swinging it here in the seventh. For catching the Matt Holiday home run, signing one of those contracts you were talking about earlier, and that forces a Chevy call to the bullpen and Jeremy Jeffress. Jeffress originally was selected by the Brewers first round, 16th overall, back in 2006. He was on Toronto's opening day roster, designated for assignment early April, and picked up by. The Brewers, and it's his sixth appearance for the Brewers. He's done a good job for them. Throws hard. There's a fastball fouled off. He was by with, Peralta. With Toronto in three games, he allowed eight hits and four earned runs, hit two batters, and walked three. Corners were batting 533 against him. But he's got a big league arm and Milwaukee has picked him up and he's done a good job for them. Adams the runner at first. Up the middle. Base hit Peralta. Adams thinks about third but hangs at second. Three straight hits for the Cardinals with one out in the seventh. John Lackey's liking his new teammates all the better right now. Still the pitcher of record and pitch right in the middle, taken right back up the middle and on through. Nobody out, runners at first and second. And AJ Brzezinski. AJ is 0 for 1 off of this young right hander. Ball right side, base hit Kaczynski. Adams rounding second, he's heading home. Play at the plate, he's in there. The Cardinals have tied it. Four straight hits in the inning. 
Now that's more like it. The bullpen has been Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde all season long for Milwaukee. They had most of their victories from their starters, and then K Rod closing them out. But in between, they can have some problems. But Brzezinski. Pitch away, just hooks it, pulls it on through. We got a tie ball game. The bench is getting excited. Watch the crowd. It's Oscar Tavares' turn. First pitch to him, swing and a foul back. Interesting matchups in this inning, too, as we look at Pierzynski. You've got the left hander Duke facing Holiday, and you've got the right hander facing Perzinski and Tavares. So interesting bullpen usage. I Ron Renicki knows his team better than I do. Yeah. I think part of it, too, is just the fact that there are some tired arms in that bullpen. You don't have the full complement of pitchers. Duke's been good enough to get both righties and lefties out, but like he's off the hook, but right now I think he's only thinking about a cardinal victory. All the more if it becomes his own, but it's all about the team right now down the Last two months. The one two just inside. Oscar Tavares showing, in my mind, Al, a very good eye for the strike zone. Yeah, I, th I thought that too, and I think that's part of the reason why Mike Cavini, when he sat down, said that, you know, he, he's not overmatched up here. Borges would hit next. Cardinals trying to take the lead here in the seventh for John Lackey. Hard hit up the middle. Base hit to Maris. Here comes a go-ahead run. It's Peralta. He scores, and it's 3-2 to two, St. Louis. I think it's so important when you talk about these big hits that is coming from guys like Tavares from Wong last night. Feel good about themselves, build confidence, and that is a potential game winner. And you can see Mike Matheny, how excited he is for the young man. But you still got to play defense, and you still got to get outs, and you still have to pad the score. What a great at bat there by Tavares taking a couple of pitches just off the plate inside having good patience finally gets what he can handle and he gives the Cardinals the lead now it's Peter Borges's turn Tavares the runner at first Kurzinski at third there's a bunt back to the pitcher and not going as Kurzinski as the bunt was too hard on the safety squeeze to score Kurzinski at the plate. Does advance the second runner into scoring position. Trying to bunt this ball to the first baseman, unfortunately. Yep. Trying to push it, like you said, a little bit beyond. You can, if you're going to bunt it hard, you got to bunt it hard enough to get by the pitcher, but down that first base side. And Pazinski also made the right decision and holding there. Sure did. Brewers relievers having a rough July August compared to their numbers in June. By the way one of their main relievers a year ago Jim Henderson was just put on the 60 day DL. He's had shoulder issues. Yeah. They thought he might be ready to come back as early as this week and they tested him out. And he said he's just not ready. Yeah he was was going to be the closer and K Rod was supposed to be the setup man. 
Daniel Descalzo with a great opportunity here. With two outs, two runners in scoring position, and the breaking pitch, strike one from Jeffress. Descalzo, six for 27 as a pinch hitter. Jeffress on the ropes. Here in the seventh, the Cardinals have already scored three in the inning. Five straight hits for the Cardinals. The Brewers will have Lucroy, Braun, and Ramirez in the eighth. And the Cardinals' bullpen will be tested again here this afternoon. Pat Neshek, terrific yesterday. We'll have the eighth again today. The 0 2, swing and a miss. Descalzo strikes out. The Cardinals strand two, but plenty of damage here in the seventh inning. Holiday got it going. Brzezinski helped. Tavares gives the Cardinals the lead. Sports Midwest. Let's go to Pat Paris. He's in our studio, and Pat has a Bomberito sports update. Chevy numbers for Pat Neshek, ERA under one. This is appearance number 50. Strikeout to walk ratio, Al can hardly be better. Yeah, he's just been outstanding. He doesn't walk anybody, doesn't give up any home runs, and he just puts up scoreless outings. Holiday. 12th home run of the season got things going for the Cardinals in the seventh Kurzinski RBI base hit to tie it and then Tervaris gave the Cardinals the lead swing and miss strike one on the slider from Meshek and you and I out talked quite a bit yesterday about how important that eighth inning was and really a game changer. We talked about a lot of the Cardinal offense, et cetera, all the things that happened with Rosenthal in the ninth. But Neshek's eighth inning changed the whole complexion of the game yesterday. Well, he restored order and all of a sudden put up that zero and stopped them from scoring. Or they kept, kept on crawling back into the ball game. And Pat has scoreless outings in 45 of his 49 games this year, giving him a scoreless streak of 20 and a third innings. That was earlier, second longest on National League relievers. 
Last night, Mishek struck out Lucroy, which hardly ever happens. Ricky Weeks also struck out, and then it was Rosenthal for the ninth. And he puts Para away with a changeup that Al predicted to end the game. Uh, the reason I predicted was because he was on his fastball. He had fouled off about five or six straight fastballs, 98 miles an hour, but he was getting on it, and a gutsy call there in a 3 2 pitch changeup. Was his 33rd save for Rosenthal to lead all of baseball now. Mike Matheny told us before the game, and we had noticed it yesterday, but the ball that was in the dirt, kind of a throwaway pitch from Rosenthal that was blocked by Tony Cruz, was at 100 yeah, miles an and, hour. And we remember the the pick, right? But didn't see the the velocity. Hitters don't have much time to react, but neither do catchers. The ball in the dirt that hard. Absolutely. Ground ball left side. Peralta on the backhand, long throw. To retire Luke Brook. Cardinals just one and 33 when trailing after the sixth inning. Ricky, the Cardinals, and when you look at the innings, they've scored runs. The opposition has outscored the Cardinals in the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth. So far, a different story here this afternoon at Bush Stadium. Cardinals hoping for a comeback victory here. They've taken the lead. Bats came alive in the bottom of the seventh. No Matt Garza in this game. Still a bit of a mystery. Haven't heard anything from the Milwaukee dugout as to why Garza was removed with a low pitch count. You know, it's not, it's not like you're playing a Sunday afternoon game on the turf or a Sunday night afternoon game where the temperature is, you know, over 100. And they're a low strike. When you throw strikes and quality pitches, you'll get the you'll get the benefit of those questionable ones. I mean, Garza just might have ran out of gas and said that's it. But it was quite curious to. The way he was pitching and dominating to come out of this game. And Giving up just the one hit in six innings, no walks, four strikeouts, and just 71 only, pitches. Only, what, two batters? The hit batsman and the base hit. Very curious. 0 oh 2 the count to Braun. Just barely gets a piece of that one. And not to make an excuse, but it might have caught the uh, bullpen by surprise, too. Not anticipating getting the game. That's but, a good point. But you know, as a reliever, you have to be ready to. And during that course of warming up, you have to adjust your mindset to say, "I'm in a, a very important game and a close one." You're always ready, but then there's level two ready. There's yeah. level three ready. O2 bounced on the ground. Almost the same play for Peralta, and the same result. Cardinal fans, the Hyatt Regency St. Louis at the Arch is offering an incredible Cardinals package this season, which includes overnight accommodations, tickets to a weekend home game, a personalized Louisville Slugger bat, and a $25 food and beverage credit to Brew House or Red Kitchen and Bar. Book it today at 314-655-1234 or visit stlouisarch.hyatt.com. We were in Chicago in the last road trip. Nishek was kind of a, a little surprised in the game where they basically told him before the game, you're not going to pitch. And then all of a sudden he pitched him in a game and you know, it, it does change your mindset. One and one to Ramirez. Mike Matheny was very 
I want to say almost apologetic about that the next day because he recognized that he put him in that place didn't think he was going to use him and didn't feel like he had kind of mentally geared him up exactly. that, that he was even going to be available that day. I used to tell Red that you know if I'm I'm smart enough to know you don't want to use me but don't ever tell me you're not going to use me right. you know because if you tell you something like that, you kind of relax, you get out of your game plan, and, and we caught him a little bit by surprise, and he gave up uh, a home run in that game. This crowd is into it here, the one two count. Base hit Ramirez. How many times have I put those words together? Another multi hit game for Ramirez. Ramirez had had going into play today three straight games against the Cardinals with three or more hits. And he joins a list of four others since 96 that have done that. Including his teammate Ryan Braun. Rick Ramirez over the last eight years the lowest batting average he's had in those last eight years against the St. Louis was 326. He came into today's action 455 on the year and he's added to that with his two for four. Strike one to Ricky Weeks who's 0 for three. Renicky does have para from the left side remaining on his bench. Trying to give Scooter Jeanette the day off. We've already seen Overbay. Weeks batting against the right hander Nishek, and he's down in the count 0 and 2. Controlling the strike zone. 17 pitches, 15 strikes. But his strikes are in and out, up and down, always around the corners. The 0 2. Ricky Weeks is one for seven off of Pat Neshek. Ramirez before that was one for 11 before his base hit. Neshek wanted to play for the Brewers this year. Asked him for a tryout. They said no. So I'm glad they did. Yeah. Neshek. Strikes out Weeks. He has been terrific. Bud Light Line. Perfect beer for whatever happens. 
and by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Mighty Mississippi, Gateway Arch, Bush Stadium. Bottom of the eighth, 3 2 Cardinals. This crowd has gotten more excited as the day has progressed. Another big crowd on hand for Sunday afternoon baseball at Bush Stadium. Will Smith, appearance number 57, our Chevy call to the bullpen. And Will Smith, one win, three losses, 370 ERA, a lot of strikeouts, 66 and 48 and two-thirds innings. Been used an awful lot this season. Hard hit to center field, but Gomez makes the play on the run to retire Matt Carpenter, who's 0 for 4, but he's hit the ball hard a couple of times. Will Smith was acquired from Kansas City from for Aoki. And he appeared on Friday night, faced the one batter, struck out Colton Wong. The Brewers looking ahead will have Chris Davis, Mark Reynolds, and Elian Herrera. In the ninth inning, Trevor Rosenthal getting loose for St. Louis. Cardinals hoping to add a little insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. Colton Wong is 0 for 3. Matt Holliday will bat next. Like one of those pitches down the way that went the pitcher's way. Should add congratulations. Today, the Cardinals announced that uh, Tim Cooney has been named the pitcher of the month in the organization for the month of July. He was 3 0. Yeah, give the hitter his name. Oh, I know that. Manervis Sierra. Well, Sierra is part of his easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Close play at first. They get Colton Long. He's not so sure about it. He asked for help from his manager. Well, you almost feel like Mike Matheny's coming out just to protect his player and just say, I'm standing behind you. But it was a close play and sliding head first sometimes it gives the illusion that it's closer. But I don't, I'm not too sure this one would be reversed. I see. Just got the signal. Don't even try it. So, Jerry Davis, where are you going to dinner tonight? <laughs> now the little swinging bun punches it and run it down the line, dives, and he's out. In the glove now, on the base now. So, two outs. For Matt Holiday. At his base, Will Smith one time and he was intentionally walked. Magnuris Sierra playing in the Gulf Coast League, not a name that Cardinal fans have heard yet. 18 year old center fielder. From the Dominican Republic hit 439. So maybe that's a name we'll know better five years from now. Look Hard hit to center field. And again, it carries to Gomez for the third out. Rosenthal has the ninth.
The ninth inning. Cardinals with just six hits, but they bunched him together in that seventh inning. And our Chevy call to the bullpen is the Cardinals closer with 33 saves to lead the league, Trevor Rosenthal. That leads up baseball now with his 33 saves and his 37 opportunities. Preparing for the 51st time. Trevor, one and five on the year, 320 ERA. Opponents are batting 223. Chris Davis will be the first batter he's faced. He's 0-2 off of Rosenthal, and both times he struck out. Rosenthal bringing it up to 100 miles an hour yesterday. First pitch, fouled off at 96. One thing about Rosenthal that Mike Matheny was talking about before the game, he has the perfect demeanor for a closer. Not too high, not too low. You'd also have to say he has the perfect stuff for it, too. That helps. Got the great fastball, but he's got a good breaking ball. And you saw that changeup is such a weapon, also, that struck out par last night for the final out. Jam shot over the head of Colton Wong. That's going to be a base hit. To lead off the ninth inning, so work to be done for Rosenthal. And we want to remind everybody that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Job gets a little tougher. Try and protect a one run lead. Home run hitter up. Reynolds hit a home run. It's 19th early in the game. First pitch to Reynolds is a strike at the knees. Davis has three stolen bases in four attempts. He's aboard at first base. Representing the potential tying run here in the ninth inning. Mark Reynolds has one plate appearance, one strikeout against Rosenthal. The 0 1. Swing and a miss. Mark Reynolds this year, in the seventh inning or later, he's batting 150. But he does have nine home runs, four home runs, and nine RBIs. Certainly a candidate for the strikeout, also a candidate for the home run. He hit one in the second. As you mentioned, Rosenthal wants the strikeout here. The 0 2 outside for a ball. Rosie has his sign and the pitch it is an off speed pitch. It's high, two and two. Cardinals want the strikeout, but I think I want the double play a little more. Yeah, I'll take the double play myself. And back to back change ups to him. The two two. Swing and a miss. He gets Reynolds. Out number one here in the ninth. Cardinals took over this game in the seventh inning. Matt Holliday, a one out home run, a bomb to center. AJ Pierzynski had a base hit to right, that scored Matt Adams. Then it was Oscar Tavares, a very good at bat, line drive to center field, scoring Peralta, 3 2 St. Louis. Top of the ninth inning, Trevor Rosenthal trying to close it out. Cardinals had five straight hits to score their three runs. Moving the line. Ellie and Herrera flown out to left. Reached on an error by the pitcher Lackey. 
and had a two out base hit in the seventh inning. Scooter Jeanette in the on deck circle to hit for Smith. Plenty of questions in this game, and there'll be time to have those questions asked when the game is over about Matt Garza leaving this game after six. Certainly was a turning point in this game. It absolutely was. Cardinals could only muster one hit off of Garza, the starter in six innings. Just two base runners, a hit and a hit batsman, and then turn it over to the bullpen, and the Cardinals find success with three runs and five hits in one inning. Not liking this delivery, they like called outside, and it is Rosenthal in danger of losing Herrera. Three and one, the count. See how selective he may be at the plate. He's hit the Cardinals well. The three-one does swing, and he fouls it back. Good cut there. Not going to hit the ball at the ballpark. Kind of want to challenge him up in the zone and try and get him to hit the ball in the air if you don't get the ground ball. Crowd is ready for the moment. And it's ball four. It just misses. A walk to Herrera and the tying run now at second base in Chris Davis. Scooter Jeanette is one for two off of Rosenthal. He's really hit the Cardinals extremely well in his brief major league career. No pesky little hitter, and he'll make you pay. But because of the walk, you move the tie and run into scoring position at second base, and any base hit to the outfield is doubtful that the Cardinal outfielders could throw anybody out. Good speed on the bases. Scooter Jeanette. Facing Rosenthal. Ball one. The other thing this does Al if Jeanette does not hit into a double play. It means you've got to go back to the top of the order too and deal with Carlos Gomez etc. Gomez 0 for 4. So far this afternoon, but very dangerous. The 1 0 pitch, swing and a foul back. Good cut there by Jeanette. That may have been his pitch to hit. Yeah, he's usually guy uh, makes contact. Three for 10 as a pinch hitter, home run and three RBIs. The Brewers pinch hitters 29 for 124 with three home runs, 18 RBIs. The 1-1. One, one. Ground ball right side. Adams has foul it. Ball. Steps on the bag, but they're calling it a foul ball at the plate. Off the foot, perhaps, of Jeanette. Jeanette makes contact and goes down on the knee as he fouled it off. Front foot. See one it right time. here. Right above the ankle. It's got to hurt, doesn't it? Already dealing with a bad hamstring. I would say that would hurt. Also had the finger issue. One and two. The pitch. We'll do it again. Good cut. Strike two. Got the off day tomorrow, so 
still don't want Rosenthal to throw a ton of pitches. Crowd a bit nervous, but hopeful. Big crowd had very little to cheer about the first six innings of this game. All we saw him do is show him meeting. Now they're cheering. Open for a ground ball here. The one, two, swing and a miss on a changeup. Second strikeout of the inning for Rosenthal. And the Brewers down to their last out. Our Budweiser player of the game, we're going to give it to John Lackey. Regardless, the outcome, seven solid innings for him. No walks, four strikeouts, 109 pitches. There you see the change up and the bottom falling out of it, way up front, thinking it's going to be a fastball. His motion sells that change up. Gomez 0 for 4 today with two strikeouts. And Gomez 1 for 10 with seven strikeouts against Rosenthal. One more out, and the Cardinals trail the Brewers by just one game in the Central. And this crowd knows it and wants it. The 1-0. Ninety-nine miles an hour. Two and two. 100 on that last delivery. Davis, Herrera, the runners. Outfielders deep for Gomez. Game on the line in the ninth for Trevor Rosenthal. up there just got a little piece of it. What are you say Ricky envision that you had a fastball like Trevor <laughs> Rosenthal. I can't even imagine it. My wildest dreams. Two and two. The pitch. And he got him. He did not hold it's a Cardinal winner. They win the series behind John Lackey, Pat Neshek, and Trevor Rosenthal, who closes it out. Saturday and Sunday, it couldn't have been a better script. The two newest Cardinals, the two new starters, get a chance to pitch against the team that you're chasing, and they both pick up victories. But this one was even special. Rosenthal, 34 save. He leads the major leagues, and the Cardinals are one bat of Milwaukee right now. Welcome to St. Louis, John Lackey. Happy birthday, Fred Bird. And don't go away. Post game is coming up next on Fox Sports Midwest.